right, guys. Last lesson of the week. Um, it's super straightforward. I know you guys have talked about angles before. I know you've talked about rays. So this should be review for most of you guys. Um, a ray is a part of a line. It has one endpoint and, <laughs> and it extends out indefinitely in one direction. So we see something like this. Okay. It's named by stating the endpoint first and then the other point, the way the symbol goes. So for this one right here, this would be ray E, G, okay, um, denoted like this, E, G, with an endpoint and an arrow going that way. Or we can name this F, G, okay, F, G, arrow going that way. So whatever way it goes on forever, that is where we hold the arrow or the uh, point. Um, if you choose to have a point on a line, and that point determines exactly two rays, they're called opposite rays. Okay? Um, opposite rays can be a line at the same time, having a current endpoint. So we have a ray here, PQ, and we have a ray here, PR. When we combine those two rays, having the same point, P, as the endpoint for our ray, it becomes a line. P is P's limit squeeze. An angle is formed with the intersection of non-collinear rays, meaning they are not like opposite rays where they make a line. They're non-collinear, and they meet at a vertex. So where these two or these two rays meet, it's called a vertex. Is it, or um, is the name of vertex in the middle of the point for each angle? Simple. I'm um, using three letters with the vertex in the middle. So if we were going to name this ray or this uh, angle, it would be this little angle symbol, angle, um, we could go B, A, C, or we can name this angle C, A, D. Now notice that A is always in the center because it's my vertex right here. Okay. We're going to name, I want you to name the one, two, three angles that you see there on your own. All right, an angle is divided into three parts, okay? Um, we have points on the angles, so like A, D, and E are our points on the angle. We have points on the inside of the angle. So right here, the inside of my angle is this yellow shaded area. I know it's gray for you guys, but this yellow shaded area is the interior angle. Um, so in this case, our interior angle points are C and B. And then we have exterior angles. For me, it's this green area, so we have F and G. Pretty simple, right? Think of this kind of like as a like chomper or eater, okay? This angle right here is eating this yellow part, okay? The yellow part's the interior. Whatever he can eat is our interior. Um, name the vertex of angle 5. So first thing I'm going to do is come over here to angle 5 and see that this right here, our angle is E, B, G for angle 5. And the vertex of that is B, point B. Okay. Um, name the sides of angle 5. The sides are E, B and B, G. Pretty straightforward, right? And then write a number, another name for angle six. Angle six is right here. We could go F, B, D. We could go E, B, D. Or we could go D, B, E. Okay, it doesn't matter. As long as your vertex is in the middle. So another name for angle six would be like D, E, F. D, E, F. Straightforward. Good job. Here. I know in years past you've worked with how to use a protractor. I know that not everyone has a protractor at home, so I don't really want to focus on this right now. Um, but if you need practice with a protractor, something like this, um, I'll help you when you get to class. Okay? Um, measure. So we have different angles that can be classified by their names. The first one is a right angle. Okay? The right angle measure is always, that's a Marker. 
is always, let's try 90 degrees. 90 exactly, okay? And it looks something like this, okay? We always, 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 always denote right angles, a little box in the corner, right? Okay? Acute angle is always less than 90 degrees, okay? And when we have something like that, it looks something like this, right? This angle is obviously smaller than that angle. The way I remember this, and probably you've been told this a million times, is like, oh, that's a cute little angle, right? A cute, small, less than 90. The last one is obtuse. Um, this is anything greater than 90 degrees, okay? Um, meaning something like that is an obtuse angle, okay? That's obviously not a right angle. And it's bigger than a right angle, so it's obtuse. Okay, the last couple things I want to talk about is congruent angles. If two angles are the same, they are congruent. And we always mark them with these little lines in between. So you can see that angle NMP is 25 degrees, and angle RMQ is 25 degrees. So they are congruent. So we give them this little mark like. So, um, if a angle is divided into two congruent angles, they're called an angle bisector. Um, so, right here, you can see that angle RPS has a ray PQ coming right in the middle of that. PQ is an angle bisector because angle RPQ and angle QPS are the same. So, PQ is my angle bisector. All right, so this is where the fun stuff comes in, okay? No more vocab. We're going to look at this uh, picture right here. And the first thing that should scream out to you is that there is a right angle right there. How do I know that? Because V, Y, X has a little box right there. And if we know that there's a little box right there, it's 90 degrees. So if we look at V, Y, X, it's a 90 degree angle, okay? Looking at T, Y, V, let's go T, Y, V, okay, that also looks like a 90 degree angle because I know if this side is 90 and this is a line right here, it is also going to be 90. So we can actually make another box right there. That is a right triangle. Okay, W, Y, T, W, Y, T. I always trace my finger over the angle that's asking so I know exactly what it is. W, Y, T, that is greater than 90, so that is obtuse, okay? And then T, Y, U, T, Y, U, that looks less than 90, so it is a cute angle. Last thing down here, I want us to do number nine together before we split. Um, if the measure of RQT is 6x plus 5, and the measure of SQT is 7x minus 2, find RQT. So the first thing we're looking for is RQT. So we're looking for this angle right here. And I know that 6x plus 5 is RQT, so RQT. Oh, we know that R, RQS bisects this angle, okay, or this line. So if this bisects it, that's a 90 degree angle, then this angle and this angle are the same, okay? So 6x plus 5 is this one. Again, I always label which one's which. And SQT, SQT is 7x minus 2. So this is an angle bisector. This angle and this angle are the same. And when we have two things that are same, we've got to find x, we set them equal to each other. We're going to go 7x minus 2 is equal to 6x plus 5. And now it's solve for x. I want you to solve for x on your own.
Is your algebra right? You should have done x equals 7. Is that the angle of this measure? Does that look like a 7 degree angle? No. Right? To find this angle, now what I got to do is plug that back in for x. So I'm going to do 6 times 7 plus 5. 6 times 7 is 42 plus 5 is 47 degrees. That's all we're doing today. Um, congrats, you finished it. Boop, boop. Um, if you have questions, please email me. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what I got. So good job, guys. We're done with this unit. You cranked through it. You did it. I'm proud of you. Adios, amigos.